Well, most um, self-help theories would say you need to be in a positive state um, to create your wishes. You say in your book it's important to, to remain in a neutral state. Do you want to expand upon this? Why is that important to be, to not, why do you not have a need to feel positive about your wish? And about, uh aha, -huh, okay. Um, I have to come up with an analogy, okay? Yeah. So in order to create a dish, you have neutral components. Right. Nutrition, so neutral. So now try to imagine that the potato that you're going to use is actually sweated up already. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of sugar in there, plenty of sugar somewhere. Also, no carrots, plenty of sugar. Actually, everything which you have, it's already sugared up. Now you have to cook a dish. What you're going to get at the end? Definitely not what you want. Right. Because pre, how can I say, pre-emotioning, that's probably r uh, the right expression, pre-emotioning something which just needs to be cooked up, it's too early. So, and um, why some self-training or methods saying that you have to position, for example, positively? Mm. And the answer is quite simple. What, this, what else they can say? If it's not that option, then how would they explain, position yourself, and there is nothing comes up? So point is, hanging, the real is uh, the option, option uh, your wish to be realized is coming uh, related to your emotional state, which is supposed to be positive. Um, it can turn usually it turns into the into self deception moment when you your wish is not realized yet, is not even formed as a wish. You would like to. It's not a wish. You would like to. And then, by emotioning positively yourself, you're so satisfied just with an idea that you would like to, actually, and then you get an opposite reaction. The system, whatever system is, takes your positive emotional state as a final result. You would like to, something to remain in the level I would like to, because I feel already good, great. Mm -hmm. There is no need to realize. Now, where is the hunger? There is no hunger, so you need no hunger to run for food. Mm. And the feeling of hunger is not pleasurable and positive. Humans have a great deal of hunger. They have a hunger to, they want to improve and they want it now. Um, do you think we're willing to put in the work? Can you be, I mean, for a wish, you ha it's very hard to detach your emotions from that because you want something so much. And so to like put a stopper on your emotions and say, that's a hard thing to detach that emotion, that need, that, that primal urge of this is what I want at my very core. And then to to say, okay, let's, is it surrender? Is that the key Some to the people. wish? To the trigger, would you say it is to let go and just, you put your thought out there, you send your command? If we're looking from the point of the process and quality of it in order to reach the final destination, yes. realization, yeah. definitely you can say you have to give it up. But the question is yeah. to give up what? Mm. Not the wish. But as yes, you said, your uh, intensive thoughts, your mm. dynamics, your emotions, yes. your expectations, pre-expectations, pre-emotions, pre -pre, it's all pre-pre. The mm. thing is, wish is not even formed yet, and you want the realization as soon as possible. Yeah. There are so many obstacles to that. First of all, are you ready to accept the realization, the result of your wish? Not everyone. Everyone wants to see, wants to experience magic. But yeah. when magic comes with all its power that it brings, people get scared. Yeah. Actually, they don't want magic. They want their own idea about the way magic is supposed to look like. They would like to see a movie about magic. So they would like to see the movie about their own happiness. That's where they're creating the movie inside themselves. Filling it up with emotional emotions while watching that movie mm -hmm. and the wish 
actually the actor, main actor, is supposed to, you know, train, is supposed to be trained, supposed to be acting, supposed to be doing something. Just staying aside, I'm thinking, what this guy is doing? Why the hell does he need me as a wish? Because I have to work on realization. He just created everything in, up, in, up in his mind. And he's, mm. okay, he's only, uh, he's, uh, let's say, only viewer of that mo movie, but look at him, he's already happy. Actually, he doesn't need even real re material realization. Mm. He is happy when, with his mental uh, visions and perspectives. So you have to give up the self-deceptive movie. Mm. So that's giving up an illusion and creates your, giving up creating your own boundaries to, the, to open yourself up to the, uh, all the possibilities there are within the cosmos. Correct. If you are strong enough, not everyone wants to wake up. Mm. Because living in an illusion, you can say that, you know, my wish has been fulfilled and realized. How? I'm just seeing an illusion mm. and I'm getting emotions. I'm content. Ah, so pleasure. So are people more intent on pleasure than happiness? And what is the perfect marriage between the two? Hey, what an interesting state. Pleasure against the happiness. Probably you are right, you know. I never thought that way. But people go for pleasure more mm. than for happiness. Because happiness, in a way, is a commitment. Ah. And a pleasure is just something... It's a dress you're dressing yourself up. But we think it can last forever. We think... I, a lot of our unhappiness, to me, stems from the fact that we want to exist in this state of pleasure eternally, but it's not possible. And so... The extent of pleasure is eternally. I mean, if it would, would even extend itself a bit longer, you'll be burned up completely. Yeah. Which pleasure is a dress, and dress get dirty. Yeah. So you have to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Even the, the greatest, most expensive dress after a month, doesn't look like that anymore, yeah. plus you stink. Yes, it's called pleasure, but mm -hmm. pleasure can stink. And the happiness is the, is the way you handle that pleasure. As a culture, we're addicted to happiness, but there is um, great magic that can be achieved through embracing a, or working through our negativity. Um, melancholy has been said to achieve great works of creativity. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, ask yourself, there is an option mm -hmm. to be cheerful, to have, to love, enjoy, and live your life that way. Second option, all, of, all your life a chance to be melancholic in order to consider yourself as a genius or the next generation consider you as a genius. Which one would you pick? Um, I don't want to be... A genius. So, <laughs> so the genius who's a genius definitely is not the one who wants to be genius no. at the end. Plus, you know, the society looks at them and claims themselves the way they want to claim themselves. So, you know, regarding the genius as well, there are quite some suicidal elements involved in yeah. genius. Does it say that in order to be a genius I have to try a couple of suicides? No. Genius can come from all conflicting sides. So geni genius is not a prototype. Mm -hmm. You can be suicidal genius, you can be very happy genius, you can be very boring genius, very dynamic genius. So pick the one. Make the choice. Make the choice, right. Everything in life is energy. Explain the, the different energies of male and female. First of all, main, uh, by, by nature, male mainly. Yeah. It's a hunter. Yeah. Right? As we are writing with my good friend in this new book, male is responsible for quantity. Female is responsible for quality. So, from the beginning, the, 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 the task, the job, the function is completely different. And together, you have quantity and the quality to pick out of that. And the consequences of, of uh, those differences are huge. 
female all her life is looking for the quality, whatever she considers as a quality from her perspective. Mm -hmm. Male all his life is looking for quantity. quantity. Two is better than one. Four is better than two. With female, it doesn't go that way. Maybe the one is the one. Mm -hmm. And the second is the water and the quality. And with male, usually the one is not the one. The two, <laughs> as many, as two is better than one. Right. So everything is different with, between them. Mm -hmm. Can they work? They have to. Do they have any choice? Do we have those energies within inside ourselves? Do we have? Is that part of our process to balance that energy within ourselves so we don't have such neediness? You know what? I would I would answer it differently. Nature knew what it was doing by creating human that way, male mm -hmm. and female. Definitely, it's a conflict. It's not a harmony. It's mm -hmm. a conflict. But as we know, the process starts from the conflict, and the process brings the the result. Whether we like it, we don't like it, we accept it or not, we have to live the way this nature is organized. Mm -hmm. So you can explain that with different the, the differentiality of the energy of approach of thinking, blaming someone. No matter what you do, you gotta live. Men with women, women with men. Mm. Usually they exchange energies, you know. And there is one uh, segment where everyone, everyone is happy. That's called sex. Somehow no one complains about that issue. Man, if they're complaining, they're complaining of lack of it, not too much. We like the pleasure. So oh, pleasure. So be concentrated on pleasure. Is that the key? That's then? where we meet. <laughs> That's our key. So um, thinking about um, transformation, we're very scared of death as a society. Um, what? How is is each day? Is it is important to embrace that? Just surrender, letting go. Sex is a form of surrender. Is this something... I would rephrase it. Probably that will help a number of people to understand. We're not afraid of death. We're afraid of losing life. Mm -hmm. It's a quite big difference. Because regarding, regarding that, we're dying every day. We call that sleeping. Mm -hmm. While we sleep, we don't exist. Our consciousness is sleeping. Can we consider ourselves as dead at that time is absolutely we are not aware of anything mm -hmm. what's the difference between that state and death the difference is that you wake up then do you realize that you came back from the death so we are not afraid of death that's a part of death is not a disease by mm -hmm. the way just to keep people informed it's not a disease it's a regular normal nature processes it's not a deviation or mutation. So, death, you should not be afraid of death. But people are afraid of losing the life. They're just counting, not the time death comes. They're counting the time life is finished. So as we expand our consciousness, do we, um, do we accept that more? How, what is the process? of evolution for our consciousness as a culture? I didn't catch uh, the, the, um, the, answer, the, the question. Okay. How do you see the evolution of consciousness from where we are now, from the, the reality to the potential? Evolution. Well, I see the evolution of the consciousness through serious conflicts within the humans, human race. Serious conflict. It's going to be conflict of everything. Of conflict of morality, conflict of values, conflict of interest, no matter what we consider. Mm -hmm. Conflict of the way the society has been organized. For example, conflict of concept of family. Right. Yeah, because today uh, the concept of 
the family is very, how can I say, egocentrical orientated. Mm. The concept of me, mine, exists. Okay. Yes, in a way, family, uh, the way family was organized, there is an element of possession mm. involved. So with evolution of consciousness, it kind of will involve, mm -hmm. that it embrace much more than my own limitation. My family is supposed to be the way I am, my wife is, my children are supposed to be kind of a copy of myself. Right. We call that helping, protecting. But actually, is our parents helping and protecting their children? If they, if they, if they do, my question is, what, what are they protecting children from? What kind of danger? I'll tell you what kind of danger. The danger lies in the mind of a parent. What if maybe it's very dangerous, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So actually, parent prosper, uh, uh, parent apply, how can I say, visualize all possible negative scenarios. Yes. Getting afraid of those scenarios, apply it to its own child, it and protect the child from its his own projection. Right. But look, nothing of that has happened. The question is, yeah, it might happen. Mm. So, let's every one of us be scared from early morning till the mm. end of the evening, because we might die every second, every next second. So, uh, families or has, is organized right now quite egocentrical. By evolution of, uh, with evolution of the consciousness, even, even family relation, even family of the family will be changed. It becomes more part of society, but not as it is right now. Not, I'm not talking about education. You'll see. Where does that begin? Oh, let me see. Now the download process starts. Hmm. In coming hundred years, it's too early yet. Right. Because the, uh, the way society organized is not supported yet. The conflict is just starting. Have you spent too much time um, giving too much power to the rational mind then? Uh, children are very pure. Children are born in a state where they experience pure bliss. And they're very free and they're very open to all possibilities. But as we grow, we have, as you say, projections put upon us. So it, is it a returning to the true self that's needed before we can even begin no. that new foundation? No, that's an uh, another actually deceptive thought within the society. Okay. My apologies, but I will say so. We mm. are over overvaluing children's situation. Child is a beautiful, young, empty box. Mm -hmm. It's empty. That's the meaning of being child. So, mm -hmm. would we like to become empty as a child? No. no. We're talking about rearranging whatever in there, just actually cleaning up the shelf, but the possession, what's in there, needs to be checked, rebalanced, something goes to garbage, something comes back, but at the mm -hmm. right place. We're talk talking about refurnishing ourselves, which will make us, in a way, younger. Because we live in mess, here is mess. So how did we come to the point of mess, from point of being empty? Easily, society helped us by explaining, all you need is love. <laughs> If that's the concept, that all we need is love, we're supposed to be the most, uh, the happiest race within the universe. If love is all we need. But look around. And some people say, it's exactly because not enough love. But let's compare with sugar. Sugar is all you need. Is the sugar all you need? No. Yeah. And then say, exactly, you are not healthy because you are not taking enough sugar. And you are taking more. It will kill you. Mm. You know, someone says, too much love will kill you. 
Anyway, it's right. No, the love knot is the only thing we need. It's just a component. And it's hardly, we can say, a crucial component. It's an important component as, as every other component that we need. So, but society didn't teach us to take the component to handle it. For example, anger. Who said that you don't need anger? Hate. Who said that you don't need hate? If nature created, if nature has created hate, for some reason, nature did that. Or God or nature, doesn't matter who. So jealousy has been created. For some reason, someone needs that jealousy. If he doesn't know how to use it, he just doesn't know because society didn't teach it. Mm -hmm. If we think we know how to use love, love, absolutely mistake. We come with love to every place. We see banana, we start to talk to banana like it's a living person. I love you, banana. <laughs> it's a banana. You don't love banana. You like it. Infatuated then. Correct. So there is love to learn. And the components needed. So love um, is a component. As in, um, you have a diamond and that's a facet of that. What are the other facets that are needed? Everything. Whatever you find in your emotions. Everything is needed. To embrace everything but not give over importance Correct. or too much energy to each one. That's for, that for you need a manual right. instruction. Okay. How to combine things. Something cannot be combined together because you, you can get quite explosive there. So the manual instruction will come later. That's the evolution. And the beginning? What is the first step we should take? I have no idea because I'm running my own path. I, I am already on the way. I began. My own evolution. Mm -hmm. Your king of consciousness. Can we all become that? Are we all able to change? No, the place of king has been taken, so... Oh, who's the king? <laughs>